Mike dated my little sister. Really? When he first came to California, right? And he stayed in Bompton, you know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah, he kicked it with that. So, man, we had a relationship. You dig so what I'm Mike saying? dated your sister? Yeah. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. When you think, like, like being that, I know you talked about just being in a place when, when uh, Brandy and uh, um, Ray, Ray J, J. Yeah. had their incident. Like, for you to be uh, in that place, you just took it upon yourself to deal with that, right? Well, no, I was getting paid $5 an hour. You, know, oh, you put your life in jeopardy for $5 an hour, you know what I'm saying? But I got a reputation that I must uphold. You know what I'm <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, and that started us off, you know, putting me way on. I went from $5 an hour to $18 an hour. With, with Mike, I was making $150 a day, you know, uh, $150 an hour, you know, and just like elevated from... Doing, and, but it started all with the Ray J and the uh, and the we Brandy. Started, it started. We started with the incident with the, the Nashville Crips trying to push up on them, and they, somebody seeing us and like, man, look, you want to make some money, Hakeem, ha, ha, and he got in contact with Cap and pew, and it went up from there. All the way. The up. first time you link up with Mike Tyson, where and when did that happen? Uh, in Vegas. That was the first time. Yeah. Well, no, but it wasn't that fight though. That it was another fight. Uh, no, that was that fight. Oh, it was that fight. Yeah, that was yeah. when y'all first first linked right, up. First, first and, and basically, that that after that whole night though, and you see what happened, how that whole tragic end happened for for Tupac. Like, do you after that work with Mike Tyson more? Yeah. Well, it it just like actually, uh, when I was locked up, Mike dated my little sister. Really? When he first came to California, right? And he stayed in Bompton, you know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah, he kicked it with that. So, man, we had a relationship. You dig so what Mike saying? dated your sister? Yeah, yeah. And so did he know that when he seen you in? Not at first. But I, you told him. Huh? You reminded him. No, my, my niece, my, uh, uh, my sister reminded him. Like it ain't for me to be talking. I'm just working. You know what I'm saying? And how did your sister contact Mike Tyson? With a phone. They got this thing like we had <laughs> Graham. We had this no, I'm like I'm, I get going. it, but I'm saying it's she still had links to him. Is yeah, what you're she saying? had it, man. It, we came. He bought her a Mercedes. We drove it from. I drove it from New York to California. To How long to. were they in a relationship for? A while. That's he, why. Yeah, he has. He, he has a preference. He likes yellow women. Mm -hmm. You understand I me? Mean? So this is yeah, we all have patterns, you know. So that that was his pattern. So they, it was always on a good term, you know. He stayed at my mom's house and slept on the couch and stuff, you know. So really, so, took so, him took him to Compton. The, the first time he had seen Tommy, he had racing pigeons. Okay, and I took him to Fruit Town and my homie, uh, rest in peace, Momo. He had tumblers, and Mike had never and. See birds roll like that. He, it, it, it was. It was what something. is racing pigeons? Racing pigeons are pigeons that go from point A to point B. They race in New York, the East Coast, because of hawks and stuff. They can in California. We have tumblers, and a pigeon flies up. And what a tumbler is, a pigeon. It's like um, the pigeon has epilepsy, and they're bred to have it. So when they fly up and they fly toward the sun, they blank out. They had, go into a seizure, and they flip coming down, right? And so they flip so far down, then they wake up, and bam. Then you have some that they call suicides. And they fly up, and they go into a seizure, and they come down, and some of them get right to the ground and just come up. Some of them bust their beaks. That's why they call suicides. Mm -hmm. And Mike Tyson had a fascination with these yeah, birds. We had bird. He had two hundred birds. I know you ain't playing because that's the same thing Columbus Short talked about about a pigeon and some mm -hmm. stuff about a bird. The yeah. guy who I interviewed, the the actor Columbus okay. Short, he be with Tyson. He been on the hot box and everything, and he was telling me about the damn bird. Mm -hmm. And I walk into the conference room, bro. And that was him, right? And there. Mike Tyson sitting at the head of the table, smoking a joint. That's like, him. It, it was him for real. So I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he like, don't, don't, don't. 
So I'm, I start, I'm like, you make a pitch, you know, they're like, give him, give him the pitch, pitch it. So I start, I start opening, like, I'm like, I'm very much into it. I'm like, okay, so we open. It's, it's a, a dusty road, boom, the show, shit, there's a truck, blah, 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 and then this pigeon flies onto the thing, and the pigeon lands onto the, and they said, don't tell me this pigeon lands into my hand. <laughs> Keep a serious face during the whole time. You I was know. dead ass because it's Mike. Me. <laughs> to me, because I was dead. I'm dead ass serious. And he nailed it. He said, "Don't tell me the pigeon lands in my hand." I said, "It definitely lands in your hands, Mike." And that's the opening. Wow. He was like, "Where the fuck did the guy explain this guy?" <laughs> Mike Tyson, <laughs> Uncle Man. <laughs> So here we go again with Mike Tyson and these birds. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. In New York, yeah. they have them on their roofs and they have cages, yeah. but they're racing birds. But I didn't know that you could actually train birds to race. Yes. Or do any of A them bird, other stuff. I mean, they fly south for the winter, don't they? Yeah. Okay, so what you do, he's coming, it's just like they talk about horse sense, right? If you take a horse from where he was fed at and you take him somewhere else, as long as anybody bother him, he's coming back to where he's fed. He geographically, I don't care where you take that horse, he's gonna come back home. Wow. And a bird is the same wherever they roost at. You can take them a hundred miles, three hundred miles, call homing pigeons, and you let them go. Back in the day, that was the the form of of communication, messages, right? You know, and let him go. He's gonna come back to where he fed at. So in oh. racing pigeons, they raise them in this cage and then they'll bring them to California and people bet on them like horses. And whoever gets back to New York first. Mm. You That's know? odd, man. I like it. So, I like it. I got, let me ask you about just the, 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 the whole the, the gang culture. I got to ask you a question that somebody had asked me to ask you. Like between, is it Fruit Town and Treetop? Why is it that they don't get along? What are they? What? Why don't they get along? This is California business. Murder. It's been bloodshed. Yeah, we started back in '87, '88. It's been going on, and just stuff happens, and you know they, they like they're right across the street from each other. I literally rose crown on this side, treetops on this side, fruit top. It was but when DJ quit, you hear him talk about fruit time, talk about Jackie, talk about Ducky, fruit time and treetops were one. And an incident happened and treetop felt like they didn't get treated right. And the beef started and it just go on like it's just like if I do something to you and I feel it's no justice. You feel there was no justice done. And okay, we gonna get over it. Then I do something to your sister. And it's all, and I just, so now I, how I'm gonna keep letting you do this? Mm -hmm. And it's no retaliation. Now we gotta kick back. You know what I'm saying? So we start these in-house beefs and on some personal things. And some of this stuff is justified. Some of it's not justified. But once blood is shed, it's hard to get over blood. It, it, that stain is deep. And sometimes you can separate for a while, but it'll never be a cohesive bond again. You, you feel what I'm saying? So that's the situation. And the situation intensifies itself that you got, like, my son, my grandson. They weren't even born when this happened. But they take sides on something that's just, you know, just the Hatfields and the McCoys. I'm just mad because I'm mad. I'm fruit town here with treetops. Like, bro, what is you talking about? You know, when we have so many other problems that we can address, but we try to find a solution in something that's easy for us. It's easy for us to hate each other. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.